Um, hello everyone and welcome to this conference in which we'll be talking about astral projection uh, or astral unfolding and we will be learning the jump technique, a quite effective technique that allows us to achieve this practice very easily. We had already talked extensively about astral projection in lecture number three of this course, but before explaining this technique and to enter into context, uh, since there may be people who have not seen lecture three, we are going to give a brief explanation about astral projection. So let's start by explaining why is it called astral unfolding or astral projection, okay? It is called unfolding because it consists of taking out an internal double or soul, a body exactly the same as the physical one. It's not of a cellular nature like the physical one, but rather of a molecular nature. And since it is of a different nature, it has different properties, for example, that body can stretch and stretch and then return to its original state. So, if we are unfolded and we stretch a finger to check if we are in the astral um, world or the physical, if we are in the astral dimension, the finger stretches. Also, with this body being of a lighter nature, we can go uh, through walls, we can fly. So, if we are in the astral and we jump, we can uh, remain floating in the air or or if we try to go through a wall or any object with our hand we can do it and the reason why it is called astral is because with it we can travel to all the celestial bodies or astros or another planets the astral unfolding is nothing paranormal or strange it is actually a completely natural process that occurs every time our physical body falls asleep. Every time we fall asleep, we go uh, to the astral world, also known as the fifth dimension or the dreams world. And we usually do it unconsciously. So here we learn to do it consciously in order to take advantage of this useful practice to advance in our inner work. All the experiences we have there in the astral world is what we remember and call as dreams. When we go to that astral world, as we usually do in an unconscious state, we start projecting our desires and ego, and also we start repeating all the things we did during the day, even if we can't remember when we wake up. The most common thing is to remember those things that don't match with the things we did during the day. Something that is going to help us a lot to achieve being conscious in the astral world is that we make an effort to awaken our consciousness, that we begin to live in a state of full attention and not losing it during the day. And as we repeat during the sleep what we did in the day, certainly staying conscious and concentrated during the day will help us to have that same state of attention during the sleep in the astral world. And for this, we will use the practice, uh, the practice of psychological death, death on March. So we can be eliminating during the day all the defects that distract us and also make our mind to bake. And also, as our consciousness is asleep, we do not realize that uh, we are out of our body. We do not realize that we are dreaming, no matter how absurd uh, the dream may be. For example, we can see uh, someone flying, and that does not uh, call us uh, to realize that we are in a dream. Or we can be in another country or any other strange place or doing extraordinary things. Uh, also, um, we are going to remember what um, we can use uh, this, uh, take this practice of astral projection for, okay? First of all, when we achieve astral unfolding, we realize uh, that we are more than this physical body. Then we realize that there are uh, more dimensions besides this third dimension in which our physical body develops. The information that we can obtain in the astral world is unlimited. Unfolding is, in itself, a very important tool for self-knowledge. Actually, we can investigate whatever we want. In the astral world, we can connect with our own immortal and eternal being. So by connecting with that higher part of our consciousness, we could solve those existential questions 
um, such as um, what is the purpose of my existence? What happens when we die? Uh, we can investigate our past lives. Also, we can investigate in which of our 108 existences in this cycle we are currently in. We can visit a relative or friend who has passed away. We can go to the court of a justice and see the book of our depths. Uh, we can meet the superior parts of our consciousness the internal father and, and mother. We can verify with our divine mother the process of psychological death. How is the work with certain defects going? We can visit a temple of wisdom. We can investigate if there is life in other planets. We can visit places on this planet. Um, if we don't have a, a couple, we can ask our being who is that person that is going to help us with, this cre with the creation of our internal existential bodies, we can meet masters of the wide lodge and receive wisdom from them. We can verify um, if someone that calls himself a master or a guru is really a true master or a true guru. We can investigate religions and esoteric schools to see if they are pure and good. We can investigate even this knowledge uh, we are receiving today to see if it is true and pure and corroborate everything we'll be learning along this course. These are just some examples of the things that we can investigate in a conscious astral projection. The important thing is to use this technique for our self-knowledge and spiritual development. Well, uh, to achieve astral unfolding, it is necessary that we practice jumping every day with the desire to float, to verify uh, in what dimension we are. We will discover that we are in the astral when we see that we float. Repeating it during the day, uh, wondering what dimension we are in, helps us become aware since during the night, uh, what we do during the day will be repeated. This happens due to the law of corres uh, correspondence. That is why it is very necessary that we maintain a state of self-observation and concentration during the day. Uh, maintain also the self-remembering. Then, by law of correspondence, at night we will have that same state of attention and self-remembering. So, when can we jump during the day? When we get up, for example, when we change activities during the day, for example, we leave the, uh, uh, we go out the bathroom and jump, we have uh, breakfast and jump, we get dressed and jump, we cook and jump, we get home from work and we jump after the shower, after we have dinner and so on. We can also jump when we remember of ourselves, that moment when consciousness calls us to the present moment. Also, if we see anything that seems strange to us on the street, we can jump. That will make us do the same in the astral if we see something strange or extra. If a person, for example, wants to unfold this very night, all he has to do is repeat the jump after each activity he does during this day. And at night, when he goes to bed, he concentrates, mantralizes, and gets up every 15 minutes, jumping with the desire to float. If he's not Floating, he lies down again, mantralizes for another 15 minutes, and gets up again and jumps to verify if he stays floating. Practice makes perfect. Later, when you already have a certain experience, you'll just need to concentrate only on observing the moment when you change from wakefulness, from the physical, to sleep. When you achieve certain experience, you'll be able to skip all the steps, but note that it is necessary to start training with a certain discipline. So, here are all the steps to practice at night after having practiced the jump all day as we said. First comes the conjuration of belly Ling and magic circle as we see, as we learned in conference seven. Then the plea to the father and the divine mother for assistance. Uh, with the words you want to make the plea. Then you have to set an objective to achieve for the practice. May it be 
investigating a past life, getting to know your own inner being or divine mother, visiting a temple, meeting with a certain master, etc., etc. Then do a short relaxation, observing that uh, the whole body is uh, comfortable. If you feel some sore in any part of your body, you have to settle better. You need to be comfortable, okay? Then comes the mantralization. We can use the mantra Fahraon, which is pronounced this way. Fahraon. You pronounce it for 15 minutes. And after 15 minutes, go to check what dimension you are in. Get up and jump with the desire to float. If you are in the astral, you will remain floated. And if not, then go back um, go back to bed to mantralize for another 15 minutes. You can continue doing this until your physical body is so tired that it doesn't get up, but the astral body does. And well... This was today's conference, and the recommendation is to practice and practice until you achieve it. Remember that practice makes a master. So, see you next week with the conference um, number uh, 38, titled The Hard Path and the Christic Work. We are going to discover what are the obstacles that we will find on the way to awaken our consciousness and how to overcome them. So, thank you very much. Until next time.